Hey teachers, I'm going to go ahead and start with what your screen is going to look like once you airdrop the stickers and the gradebook file to your iPad. The first thing that's going to come up is your airdrop options. If you have Good Notes app already installed, then that's the option that's going to be what you click on. Once you click on it, it's going to ask you which category you wish to choose, and I'm just going to choose gradebook. So gradebook for both, and of course you can move them after and rename them. So the first file is the stickers, all the digital stickers that are included, and then you also have the digital gradebook. So I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you what's included in the stickers. Once you open the file, the first thing you're going to want to do is click on the table of contents bar, I guess that's what you call it. Um, the first thing you're going to see is a how-to guide and then the digital stickers options. Every single sticker is included in three different styles and five different colors. So the first option is a solid capital letter font, and the second one is all capital letters. The third is lowercase. On this page, you can see all of the different ones that are pre-made in each different option. All of these titles also serve as a link to that sticker. So let's say you are looking for a solid font in option one. For gradebook, all you'd have to do is just click on gradebook and it brings you to those digital stickers. Whenever you are looking to select these digital stickers from this screen, you're going to use the lasso tool. And I'm going to show you how to do that once we get to the planner. So you can go ahead and go back to the first screen. The arrow back will bring you back to your gradebook category. And then you can click on the gradebook itself. I like to use this first one as a cover page, so I usually put my name similar to the editable PDF, and of course you can spend as much time as you want decorating this or drawing any kind of designs, or if you wanted to add stickers that would be possible as well. You can put your grade and subject along with the year. So after you do that on that screen and you go on to the next screen, you will see your table of contents. Now every so many slides is another table of contents. The reason for that is within this gradebook there are different size option spreadsheets. So for example, the first six have up to 30 blanks. The second six have up to 25. The next one has up to 20. And then the last one has up to 15. It's your choice which ones you want to use, and if you need more of those pages, you can do so as well. But the table of contents page has six stickers on the front that are linked to the different pages. So for example, this first sticker, when you click on it, it will bring you to this first page. The second sticker will bring you to the second page, third to the third, and so on. It goes that way for all of the table of contents. So let's say you would like to use this first one for your block one math grades, block two math grades, block three math grades, block one science grades, sorry, block four, sorry, block two science grades and block three science grades. All of these would bring you to those. So I'm going to come here on my table of contents and I know that I'm going to want them in this order. So I'm going to go ahead and start writing just like that. The first one, for example, this year, I'm just teaching math to three different blocks, but I know I need to keep track of all of their math grades, and I also have to keep track of all of their conduct grades, because my school is very big on rewarding positive conduct. So I want to make sure I'm very organized whenever it comes to their conduct grades, because when it comes down to reward them, I want it to be cut and dry and easy for me to make that list. So I'm going to label all of these as needed. And of course, you can get as creative and hopefully much neater at this than I am. But once you have labeled all six stickers, or however many stickers you need, and it will now make links to those pages. So my block one math is going to be when I click on it. And I'm going to go ahead to my digital stickers. And I'm going to look for gradebook. I want the pink gradebook sticker, so I'm going to click on the lasso tool, circle around the gradebook, and then when take screenshot appears, I'm going to click on it. 
click on the arrow box and then copy. Go back to your gradebook file, hold down on the screen where you wish to place it and click paste. So now I have this title. I also want to put block one right here. So I'm going to go back to my table of contents. I'm going to want block one in the capital font. So I'm going to click on that. Oops, sorry. And I'm going to grab the blue. Take screenshot, copy, go back and paste it where I want. So this is block one. Of course you could put it under here if you wish. And this is math. So I'm gonna go back up to my table of contents and we'll do math in this one. In um, green. Take screenshot, copy, and then I'm going to paste it. So once I've resized this, I'm ready to start putting in my students' names for block one math. So I'm going to pick a skinnier tip on the pencil and I'm gonna start writing some names. So I know what you're thinking, writing names does not sound like fun, but if you work in a school like I do, you tend to get a lot of new students. I felt like we got a lot more students than we lost, which is fine, but I needed to add them in and I didn't want to keep reprinting every single time and it not match. So writing it in just made more sense. So what I would do is just write their names in. And sometimes I like to jot down the date that they started just in case that's important as well. So once you have your entire class list down, and you would like to also use this list again, because remember, I have block one math I also need to keep track of, and also for block one, I need to keep track of their conduct grades. So if I have my entire class list written out and I wanna just put it on the other page, I'm gonna grab the lasso tool, circle around my list, hold down on it, and hit copy. In the bottom left corner of every single gradebook sheet or every single sheet like this, there's a flower with a home button. And if you click on that flower, sorry, if you click on that flower, it will bring you back to your table of contents. So remember, what I wrote was my block one group. So I'm going to go back to block one and I'm going to paste in the names and they're ready to go. So all I would have to do is go back to my stickers decide that that is block one's conduct block one's conduct and then i'm going to label it as so so when i'm ready to start putting grades i can always put chapter one and then start writing in their grades as I see fit, okay? Another way I plan to use this, which I wanted to share with you, is to list my accommodations. Now I have um, a pretty decent sized um, amount of kids that usually get small group, which is completely fine, but I wanted to make an easier way to have this with me at meetings, because in meetings I often need their grades, their conduct, and then sometimes if they have accommodations. So for example, if I was using this for um, accommodations, whether they have small group or test read aloud, I would click accommodations, grab a label real quick, take screenshot, copy, and I would put that on here, and then I would write in either using, I would just put my whole class list and just check off who it applies to, or only write those students that have any kind of accommodations. So if I have Ashley, Nicole, and Mandy all needing small group for testing, then I would just check them off. But if Ashley and Nicole also need a calculator, 
then I would just check them off as well. So that way I have a clear idea of who has what and who needs what. So I have that ready to go as well. And of course, I could link that in this table of contents and this could be all of my accommodations. Um, I hope I've shared many different ways for you to use this gradebook. Um, the best part is if you want to start over and you want to just redo it completely, then you can always just airdrop it to yourself again. Um, you can add more pages if you need so. So if you wanted to take these pages, you would just have to copy and paste them. Sorry. And then you could just paste in your pages. Um, it's up to you how you wish to use them. If you want more of them, then you can do that as well. If you wanted one grade book per class, you can do that as well. I hope that answers all of your questions. Please email me if you have any other ideas. Thank you.